Well, for five years, Julie Kenner practiced law and wrote novels, but in 2004, she gave up being an attorney to become a full-time writer and mom. And she has written a number of books, including her 2005 novel, Carpet Demon, which has been <laughs> optioned by 1492 Pictures and Warner Brothers in a multi-book deal. And we need to find out more about this. this these, that book is about a... a, a demon hunting soccer mom. It is. It's about a demon hunting soccer mom. It's a lot of fun. I was writing romance novels at the time and I wanted to write a paranormal romance. And um, But I also wanted to write Chiclet, which had become popular back in the day. And I was kind of pondering with some friends about what I could do. And I was like, well, I had this image of these demon hunting guys and like uh -huh. these long flowing capes kind of going over a hill, you know, going out to fight evil. And at the same time, I had um, just had my first, my daughter, my, my first child. And um, so I wanted to do something about a mom, too, you know, kind of mommy-lit. And um, it was sort of like the Reese's peanut butter commercial. You know, that kind of just <laughs> bounced together. And um, it wasn't kind of until after I'd sort of developed the idea that I realized it had sort of a Buffy tone to it, which is, you know, kind of. So um, I got a cover quote from Charlene Harris, who writes the, you know, um, True, yeah. True Blood, Suzuki Stackhouse books. Yeah. books. And um, she said it was sort of like, what if Buffy the Vampire Slayer grew up and kept her past a secret? So that was the kind of thing. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's very... Um, uh, you know, Kate is busy doing her mom thing, and she's been retired for a while, and then uh, she bumps into a demon in Walmart, and that pretty much <laughs> opens the floodgates because of hell. that's where every mom that, is. <laughs> that's right. That's where every mom is. Aisle nine over there. So it was great fun. She has a, um, a, a daughter who's a teenager and a son um, who's a toddler, um, and um, she goes out and fights demons, and it's, it's, it's great fun. I just put out the sixth book um, <laughs> independently um, about two weeks ago called Pax Demonica. So. And you've got a movie deal. I do. It oh has been gosh. in development for a very long time, but the last time I talked to Fort, the people at 1492, they were telling me that they told me how long it took to get um, one of their movies. I think it was, I think it was Night at the Museum out. Uh, you know, so you know they're still working on it. They've re-optioned it several times, and you know. So well, can you tell us a little bit about this book here called Heated? Do you need to know I anything else yeah, other than that's on the cover? I mean, really, cover. really. <laughs> this is it. not Demon Hunting Soccer Mom. I, <laughs> I gathered that. Like, how? Where does this where does this come from? Because you've been married 21 years, like myself. I have, and you know, a lot of things change creatively, and things die down a little sometimes. So, so where does this inspiration come from? You know, it's it's pretty much where any of my inspiration comes from. It's 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 little bits of life, little bits of pop culture, little bits of my imagination. I mean, it's interesting though because I get that question more now that I'm writing erotic romance <laughs> than I did when I was writing like. Demons. Nobody okay. was like, have you met a demon in Walmart? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have. Probably I have. because of the whole Fifty Shades of Grey phenomenon. Absolutely. Which I, I'm curious how you, how you view that series, that book series, and the, the movie coming out soon. I'm... Yeah, I've seen one trailer for the movie. I don't know if it's an official trailer or just one of the shortcuts on YouTube. I thought it looked really, I thought it looked really good. I think it, it could be a really fun movie. I hope it does incredibly well because I think that, um, you know, I, I think Fifty Shades did for women's fiction um, what Harry Potter did for kids. I mean, I have met so many women, and people have emailed me and posted on my Facebook page, um, and said so they really started reading again when you know erotic romance came out. And it was sort of this perfect storm of ebooks mm -hmm. and the topic because women. You, you didn't have to show what yeah, you were reading. Exactly. I mean, you could sit there with. You know, I like with what you're saying about e getting people reading again. Did you did you have concerns though about like the quality of that writing compared to yours? Because you you take care in like weaving a story. It's not all just erotica. Well, no, it's it's it's. I mean, I I'm very much conscious of you know my word choice and the voice and the rhythm of the words, and I, I like to think that I am in pretty much any book that I write. So. I don't know that an author can really compare herself to another author. Yeah. And I think that really the, the, the bottom line is how does the book impact the readers, you mm -hmm. know? And some books just draw readers in and, and really, you know, get them going. And certainly 50 did that. I mean, it, it touched a chord in, in a lot of women across the country. So. Now, does an idea come to you and then you just get it all out quickly? Or does it take time for you to really develop a story? I tend to... Um, have an initial idea that's either a character or a, a situation, mm -hmm. and it just depends on the book as to which it is. And then what I um, will do is I almost always write the first chapter first. I'll just sort of sit down and kind of explode out this first chapter. And um, once I've done that, um, I'll go in and I'll write a synopsis. Um, 
I do, I'm in a position now where I can where I can sell a book on a, on a blurb as opposed to a synopsis, but it's still very nice to have that roadmap, yeah. even if you don't stick to it. It's like if you're going to go to Disney World, right. you know, you think you're going to just take, you know, I, you know, Disneyland, you think you're going to take I-10 to Anaheim, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you're not necessarily going to detour to Vegas, and so that's part right. of the fun of the journey. But um, I do tend to write fast. I kind of lose the thread of the story if I slow down, and, yes. and then I. So you don't necessarily use a, a, a traditional outline. You no, just kind no, of it's really it's a narrative. It's a narrative um, story, um, and and then I never look at it again unless I get stuck. So it'll sit there, and sometimes it's very close to the, what the actual book turns out to be, and sometimes it's completely different. Wow. And I'll revise. I mean, I, I drive my editor at, at Random House crazy because I will literally revise in copyrights. So I'm like, and now I'm adding like five new scenes, and they're like, and I can just see them in production Stop. going, oh my god, can we just shoot That's her? Okay. You keep them, you keep them in well, you can pick up Julie Kenner's books at any bookstore and online, and she's going to stick around with us the rest of the show, and we're going to learn more about her and talk more about your other books. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of movies, next we're sitting down with our good friend Gary Kogel to talk about the release of his first produced film. Stick around to learn more about words and pictures. We'll be right back.